Come on, Didge. I'd like you two to fight on video now. Can you do that? And fight. Oh, careful. That was aggressive. I'm still here, guys. It's just one of those slow times of the year for us. Next week and the following should pick up quite a bit. We're going to start pulling some of the equipment out, going through some things. We've actually been busy. We've made a couple videos for our second channel called Between the Rows, which is linked below. We've actually got a couple race videos on there recently. So if you haven't seen those and you're interested in what we do with our race programs, with uh, my modified and with with Onyx's go-kart in here, which it's, it's too dark for you to see, but if you're interested in that, check that out in the, uh, in the link below, the channel below. I finally finished hogging all the junk cottonwood trees out of the CRP land right down here next to the farm. So the plan is to do a little bit more with the woods bat wing here and then clean that up and unhook it because dad's going to use that tractor to spread some gravel. I've also got the brush cutter that I've got to get off the skid steer. But before I unhook the brush cutter, I was thinking, you know, when I was a kid around the Grove, we had some trails where we had planted the new trees and it was kind of cool because we could ride the four-wheelers through there and everything and it was kind of cleaned up. Well, my kids don't have that because the trees have all grown in. And it's gotten so thick in there you can't ride through it. So I was thinking it'd be cool to just take the brush cutter through there and cut a six foot wide path so they could take their little Polaris Razor and their little four-wheeler through there. I'm trying to scope out a potential path here and maybe I'll spend an hour doing this this morning because I'm not all that busy and it's for the kids. Maybe I'll just use the brush cutter to scope out my path. Had a little trouble getting it in the hole. Well, look at that. That's gonna be a cool little trail. I'm probably way more excited about it than the kids will be, but I tend to believe kids need more trails through the woods. Now, was that entirely necessary? No, definitely not, but it's cool. What are you getting ready to do? Gymnastics? Want to see what I did? I built you a trail for the razor. How long did this take? I'll show you. What do you think? Good. Good. This will be fun to run the razor through, huh? Yeah. Heck yeah. Now you got more trails instead of just running on the driveway. Okay, you gotta push this button here. Push that one there and hold it. Oh, I knocked their cone over. There, now you can let it go. Isla says the ethanol plant smells kind of like donuts. Isn't that what you said? <laughs> She's being shy today. Now push the bottom one to close it. There you go. Well, now she's excited. It all just looks so delicious. Isla, what do you say you're getting? Ice cream sandwich. Ice cream sandwich? How's your ice cream? Mine too. Look at how dry the corn is, Isla. Yeah. We are burning up. Things should not be turning brown. You can see the spots all through this field. The good news is we don't have any soybean aphids because of it. Spider mites are not bad enough to have to spray because we're not going to have much yield there anyway so look at your brother go he's an animal we're going to need new tires on that 
really hoping he takes to the new trail. Did you see what I built you for that? What? I'll show you in a minute. What do you think, Isla? Good. Good. Same exact answer as your big sister. Let's see what Onyx says. What do you think? Does it go all the way down there? Goes all the way through. Does it loop around that way too? Yep. Pretty cool, huh? We could build a few like jumps or something. We could build a few jumps or something, I guess. I like your yeah. style. Oh, Isla says no? Well, you're wrong, we could. I need water, Isla. Do you need a bottle of water? Me too. I think I'm done with the bat wing mower for now, so I'm gonna clean that up and unhook it. But before I unhook it, I like to clean up the area where I'm gonna unhook it because you know my style. <laughs> Apparently dad's adding some gravel over at his place so he needs the box blade back on this which wouldn't hurt because our driveway's getting rough anyway but before I throw that on I got some volunteer work to do up at the church real quick. You might have deja vu because about a year ago I did this exact same thing but there used to be a lot more of these cedar bushes here at the church. I tore out the really ugly ones but now they've decided they want to completely redo this little landscaping area so I guess I'll kill more trees for the day. It's wider around than it looks from in the cap. These little cedar trees are kind of cool looking. Until you gotta work with one, wrap a chain around a fully grown one to yank it out of the ground, then they're not that cool of a tree. Huh. They sure don't make chains like they used to could. We're gonna try a little push action. See if we can freeze some things up first. Just another day of trimming the bush. The flagpole looks taller now. The corn just looks thirsty, to be quite honest. It's it's starting to the leaves on the bottom are, are dead and they're worse once you get inside the field. We pulled some ears earlier today, um, starting to abort some of the kernels up towards the tip, kind of getting some pullback on that. It pollinated well, but it's not filling the ears out very well. We certainly don't expect an average yield this year, but you know, that's, that's to be expected. We've had 1.6 inches of total rainfall since we planted our first field of corn. So we got one field of corn that thankfully got like four inches of rain on it right after we planted. So thank goodness we got that because I think that's what this crop has been hanging on to, at least for the first half of the summer. The beans are starting to twist the leaves up. You can really see some of the spots out there. We're starting to get spots already where they're turning, which means the plant is shutting down. It's going to start filling out and, and it's going to stop setting any more pods. Again, same thing with the beans. I would guess we're going to be, um, we're going to be down relatively low probably going to be a quick harvest unless our worst fear happens and it starts raining and then we deal with a poor crop that went through a drought and we're fighting mud the whole time so that could happen i kind of doubt that it will though one thing that is going to add maybe a little bit of extra work to this year's harvest again is dad is actually having his second knee replaced which he was going to put off for another year or at least another six months have it done in the winter but it's been bothering him bad enough he's getting it done now next week so we're gonna have another harvest where dad's kind of got a bum knee. Hopefully this one goes well. We can stop him from getting in and out of a tractor too quickly this year. And um, more than likely, he'll put a lot more hours on that combine I bought than I will, but that's okay. He'll get his knees fixed up and we'll get it handled. I'm pretty sure I left a little chunk of broken chain laying up at the church. I better go get that. But first, check out the email I got with some of the new apparel that we just uh, came out with. We got the Millennial Farmer there with the Moline, the Mighty Mo, the American flag. 
got some keep it between the rows shirts one with a uh, I think we're going with this brighter red here keep it between the rows got the corn stock we got the combine here and through the month of August everything on the farm focus site is 10% off you just got to use the code 10 off 10 off that's not just for our stuff but for all the creators all the people they work with that they're they're doing shirts for all their clients so go to you can go to farmfocus.com or you can go to our website it should be linked down below somewhere that's 10 percent off everything for the month of august including these new designs so check that out all right i better go get that chain before i forget what are you girls up to trails. huh trails. the trails having fun yeah i'll make my to the sky before okay i'll zip up there in a minute Okay. Have fun. And this is going to be our first attempt at a racing video. We're going to go racing for four days in northern Minnesota with the Advantage RV modified, with soda modified touring series. Getting ready to roll off for the feature. We got 40 laps. Start 10th. Heat race went decent. Wish we'd have gotten second there so we could have redrawn for a better spot, but we had the car to do it, just didn't get it done. It is hotter than heck out. We thought yesterday was hot. My pickup said 102 as we rolled in here. Low humidity though, so that helps a little. There is a chance of some rain moving in here in the next couple hours, but we've got close to four hours before we're gonna start racing. So we'll go through the pill draw here, get a number, grind some tires, change some gears, hammer out the quarter panel, maybe put a front bumper on and see where we go. So last night's changes to the shocks on the left side felt pretty decent. We changed some of the timing on the left front, left rear, um, took some of the pogo sticking out of the car, softened up the left rear some. It drove nice till the track went one lane. We're gonna try something different under the right rear now. I'm not a shock guy, so I don't ask too many questions. All I know is this is one of the new shocks that a couple drivers have had really good luck with, so we're gonna swap it out and see what happens. It's supposed to free us up on the throttle through the center of the corner a little bit. Park, Greenbush, Minnesota. That pretty much right there is Canada. So we are way up here. Another night of racing. We are set up camp and it's time to go to the pits. There's not a whole lot of tracks in the upper Midwest, specifically Minnesota and the Dakotas that I haven't been to, but this is one of them. I have never seen this track in person. I hear it's a lot like last night in Grand Forks, just less banking, maybe a little more straightaway. Most guys say to run the same gears. Onyx and I are going to head up here and take a peek, see what we've got. How'd it go last night? Well, there's still beer in the cooler, but we won. Woo! Here we go. Tuesday morning, we are going to load up Onyx's go-kart, and then we're actually going to head three hours to the southeast to Menominee, Wisconsin for... Uh, Thunder Hill Speedways, what, I, th I believe they call it the Wing Cart Nationals. I don't know a whole lot about it, but it sounds fun. We've certainly never traveled this far for a go-kart race before, but it's going to be a ton of fun. Sounds like there's going to be a lot of heavy hitters there and a lot of carts in each division. The only other time we've seen this racetrack is when they were 
rebuilding. Basically, yeah, completely rebuilding it. So they got a really nice guardrail going all the way around it. Track looks really smooth. Got a ton of carts here. Some big shooters, big names. Kyle Bush's kid over there. Kyle Bush's son, yeah, yeah Braxton. Grandson. Earnhardt's, well, it sounds like Dale's nephew. So would that be Dale Sr.'s, yeah, grandson. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Here we go. 